Comedy Central's World News Headquarters in New York, this is The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not Jon Stewart. Welcome to The Daily Show. I am Emilio Hidalgo, your host, and we call it The Daily Show because I am only going to be here today. I don't know what you're doing for your news tomorrow. Today on our flagship show, we are going to be talking about Edward Snowden. Yes, that, Edward Snowden. But before we get into what is current with Mr. Snowden, let's have a quick recap of his past. As many of you remember, in June 2013, Edward Snowden leaked classified NSA documentation. Although most people seem to forget that, unless he was the one who was currently leaking pictures of famous actresses, which of course will not be named. We are classy. Now, the real mystique of this X-Men was that Snowden was a system administrator for the CIA. I believe that Snowden is a scapegoat in certain situations and a martyr in others. In this country alone, the media portrays him in such opposing lights. And on a global scale, the presentation of Snowden's actions are reported as how it is beneficial to other nations' agendas. With that, we drive into our first story from the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail's online article is an interview with a security intelligence advisor who is tasked with the nation's safekeeping, David Cameron who adamantly blasts Snowden throughout the article, stating that technically Snowden is not a British traitor because he's an American, although he did portray the values of this country, lock, stock, and barrel. Presented alongside this quote are haunting images, that of British hostages as well as videos of terrorists and their demands. These images are meant to tug at the heartstrings and seem to be a subtle way of using the transfer technique of propaganda. Deliberate fear-mongering, if you would in stating that his nation's failed attempts to compromise the group ISIS is due to the fact that they have intel that alerts them to turn off their cell phones and use a more guerrilla form of communication. To add to this sentiment, we turn to the Washington Times with the same analysis on how Snowden has had an impact with the ISIS information, except this time from a U.S. perspective. This article features an interview from NSA Security Director Chris Inglis. He also believes that the Islamic State capitalized on the Snowden leaks. The deputy director of the NSA at the time of Snowden's leaks was asked if the intel had any impact on the Islamic State, and he simply answered, clearly. This article goes on to re-describe the leaks that Snowden is responsible for and how these documents in the wrong hands give a clear advantage to the Islamic State. But they never directly take a shot at the man until the end of the article. This is where they look to demonize him to people who once viewed him as a freedom fighter, stating that this new ISIS group presents the Snowden situation in a new perspective, with a direct quote from the article stating, Mr. Snowden claims to be an activist and reformer on the issue of privacy, yet he exposed basic spying techniques for finding terrorists who want to kill Americans. Which for me seems like a glittering generality from the Washington Times. Their use of buzzwords such as killing Americans can be an emotional knife into the psyche of the reader. We are analyzing a man's past actions a year later, still finding fault for what some view as informing the people of their civil liberties being invaded, while others see it as a necessary evil to ensure national security. My last statement on this is that hindsight is 2020, but a government unable to make necessary adjustments to a problem that arose over a year ago? There might be a bigger security question that needs to be answered. For our third story, we turn once again to the Daily Mail who, this time, as sort of a way of balancing the playing field, offers Snowden a chance to make accusations against the NSA. With his accusation of the NSA still privately passing unedited communications of Americans to Israel that could turn relatives of Americans in Israel and Palestine into targets. This article is short and sweet. They allow Snowden a platform to speak his accusations over spying still going on. This article does not paint Snowden in a frame. It simply takes direct quotes from him and states that he is still wanted in the U.S. for espionage which is still a fact. This is interesting, coming from the same paper that, as I stated earlier, was quick to use emotional hotspots and traumatic imagery to convey this same man as an aid to terrorist organizations. The next story is published by the Wall Street Journal, so you know it's reputable. Maybe even a little too reputable for the show. But nevertheless, it views the impact Edward Snowden has had in Germany, where the people seem to view Snowden as a martyr, a hero of sorts, having his face on everything from skateboards to t-shirts. His actions are celebrated by musicians and artists of all kinds. If only this nation had a single man like that to stand behind. A single uniting force. Maybe we do. Of course it's Chris Pratt. He's a freaking guardian of the galaxy. I mean, Germany went all America on him, using Snowden's face to capitalize, even including him in lingerie ads. Based on that image, maybe the Germans have a little capitalism in them yet. I mean, there's still a lot to uncover. Just make sure you use some protection. And by protection, I mean secure landlines and firewalls on your computers. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. 
But in all honesty, this article just seemed to use Snowden as a way to capitalize on his notoriety and make a quick buck. Sellouts. Initially, the German government was seeking to offer Snowden asylum for testimony against the U.S. and their spying practices. Some German politicians have suggested inviting Snowden to Germany to testify about NSA spying there. But Berlin has ruled that out to avoid a clash with Washington over extraditing him to the United States. So instead, this article focuses on his attempt to seek asylum in Switzerland. This article is very balanced, once again, offering up facts other than Michael McCall, who is a Republican head of the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Homeland Security. He offered up his thoughts on the proposed Swiss deal, stating, Snowden shouldn't be allowed to trade our intelligence community sources and methods for safe haven in other countries. They are very clear in another person's opinion. And throughout this article, they only offer facts. And when they do offer an opinion, it's to state the person, their belief, and their position, and why they believe that. So to me, it seemed like a very balanced article. Beginning to wrap things up, we go back to The Guardian, the initial source of Snowden's first leaked information. For me, these will be the most interesting to analyze, as he's given them major notoriety. In the first article by The Guardian, it simply speaks of his first UK public appearance via satellite. Snowden was asked if the GCHQ was a bigger player than everyone thought. This is his response. Now, in the United Kingdom, where you don't have the same uh, constitutional limits on the sort of laws the parliament can pass, um, what we've seen is the creation of a, a system of regulations where basically anything goes. Uh, the GCHQ and other British spy agencies can do anything they want. There are really no limits on their capabilities. This back and forth between the two should be very interesting to watch in the coming years. GCHQ should be weary of messing with the Nobel Peace Prize winning man. Which brings us to our second article from The Guardian. Of course, if you Google Nobel Peace Prize 2014, Snowden's name will be nowhere. That's because the Nobel Peace Prize that The Guardian is talking about is made up by them and voted on by their viewers. If that isn't a false analogy, I really don't know what is. At least try to be a little less obvious about it, Guardian. I mean, technically I have a Golden Globe and an Oscar. Although... My Golden Globe is a little bit more tan, and Oscar's an old high school friend. It really is a travesty for The Guardian to associate a Nobel Peace Prize winning man in Edward Snowden with true Nobel Peace Prize winning people such as Mother Teresa, Jimmy Carter, Al Gore, Nelson Mandela, and our current President Barack Obama. For shame, Guardian. At least make it a little less obvious. Which brings me to my final article which details how Snowden still impacts our everyday lives. If you need evidence of this, just check your pocket. With an article by the New York Times detailing how Apple and Google no longer store your encrypted passwords on their servers. But the article does go on to say that eliminating the iPhone is one source I don't think is going to wreck a lot of cases. There's such a mountain of other evidence from call logs, email logs, iCloud, and Gmail logs. They're tapping into the whole internet. In conclusion, from my observations in this research process, it seemed that in the U.S. they still tried to deify Snowden to an extent of blaming our current missteps in the inability to catch ISIS as an extension of his previous transgressions. While I think he's guilty to an extent, the article seemed to try to make a black and white situation out of an area that can be easily defined as gray. On the other end of the spectrum, we had The Guardian, a U.K. paper that clearly glorified Snowden, as did the Germans and the Swiss who wanted his testimony. Over, I think both sides to this story use Snowden as a means to an end for whatever is best for their personal interest. Looking back at the commentary published by the Political Quarterly at the end of 2013, it would seem that at the time Germany was furious with the United States over their spying practices and that the UK GCHQ paid no attention to the leaks whatsoever. Fast forward to today and what has changed. Germany now idolizes a man that opposed the United States and the GCHQ now vilifies that exact same man. What could have possibly changed in 10 short months? That would be the rise of ISIS. While at the time of the initial Snowden situation, a USA Today poll found that 54% of Americans supported his prosecution, but 49 said the leaks served public interest. It would be interesting to re-poll these same people with the current ISIS situation. Now that the media had a new way to spin the Snowden situation, they would not miss their chance to either paint him as a martyr or a scapegoat. It really is interesting to see how a new common enemy can change the perspective of a man in 10 short months. But hopefully in these 10 short minutes I was able to give you a greater view of what's going on in the world today. Good night and good luck.